So we all love a Rex, or a Raptor, or a Bracky, or even a Mosa. But there are some animals that are missing out in our parks. Hello and welcome back to Tricol Gaming with me, Fletcher. And in this video, I am going to go over 10 species from Jurassic World Evolution 2 that often get overlooked, ignored, or are simply underrated. Before I get to the video, I just want to show you guys this website, DinoDB, which came in handy to make this video. This website gives you all the facts and figures about every animal in the game and can really help you plan out your parks. Right, let's get to those animals. Number 1, Struthiomimus. So we start small here with the Struthiomimus. This I feel is one of those animals that often gets replaced for something a little more interesting. But Struthi can be very good for your parks. While it has a low rating, it is cheap, it is fairly easy to look after, and gets along with a wide range of other animals. This makes it great for challenge mode parks. And for those playing sandbox, Struthiomimus comes with some absolutely beautiful skins. Every pattern and every colour works well together, and the wide range of colours means you can create skins to suit any environment. Some of my highlights are Amazon Rainforest and Rana for a lovely striped desert skin, Gambia River Basin and Lithobates makes for a wonderful deep blue striped skin that I think would work well in a rainforest, and Svalbard and Pelophylax makes for a stunning black and yellow wasp-like skin. Good skins make for good dinosaurs in your parks, and Struthi has some great ones. This dinosaur deserves to be used more often. Number 2, Nigerosaurus. Oh, this poor little chunky sauropod. In Jurassic World Evolution 1, this guy was a very welcome addition as our only small sauropod. However, in JWE2, Nigerosaurus has had to compete with its slightly more interesting cousin, the Amargosaurus. However, in terms of sheer rating, Nigerosaurus smashes its punky cousin. In fact, Nigerosaurus has a higher rating than some other more famous animals like Dimetrodon, Velociraptor, and even Apatosaurus. In addition, Nigerosaurus only dislikes living with other sauropods, making it pretty useful for making enclosures. As far as sandbox gameplay goes, it may not be as interesting visually as the Amargosaurus, but there are some subtle yet lovely skins that can be applied. One of my favourites is the Gambia River Basin coloration that has this lovely orange and blue skin. Give it Pelophylax patterning, and it has these lovely tiger stripes that really does look good. Much like the Struthiomimus, this is a dinosaur that has a wide range of colours that would work well in any environment. Number 3, Monolophosaurus. This DLC animal is one I honestly don't use enough in my parks, but having discovered some of its lovely skins, I'll be trying to make use of it more. Monolophosaurus is in the unwelcome position of being part of a very competitive dinosaur grouping, that of the small carnivores. It shares this group with the Velociraptors, with animals like Proceratosaurus, the Dilophosaurus, and of course the group dominator, the Pyroraptor. All this results in the Monolophosaurus, I think, being underused in the parks. In terms of its use in challenge modes, Monolophosaurus has a base rating of 145, making it better than other small carnivores like Herrerasaurus, Deinonychus and Dilophosaurus. It is reasonably expensive to create a small pack of these, and you do need to have 4 or 5 to make the perfect social pack, but its rating more than makes up for that. Its habitat requirements are also a little easier to create. In Sandbox, this wonderful little carnivore has some really decorative patterns. The patterns change the colour of the head crest and the striping, with the pattern colour referring broadly to the colour on the crest. Some of my favourites include Salar del Hoasco and Rana for this wonderful vivid green colour and beautiful pink purple crest. Great Sandy Desert and Papyrana makes for a wonderful desert style skin with a brilliant blue crest, while Svalbard and Pelophylax makes for a wonderful fiery black and red design. Number 4, Nodosaurus. The Ankylosaurs in Jurassic World Evolution 2 suffer a lot due to Frontier's inability to make any of them look good with their skins. Nodosaurus is one of those overlooked animals, which while on the face of it looks very plain, has quite a few things going for it. Firstly, Nodosaurus might not have a very high rating at only 66, but you would be surprised to find that this is higher than Styracosaurus, Parasaurolophus, and give it a few genetic upgrades and you will easily be beating out slightly higher animals like Taurosaurus and Amargosaurus. It is also relatively cheap to synthesise and incubate, with only two animals needed to make Nodosaurus happy with itself. And while it doesn't get along with other Ankylosaurs or Stegosaurs, it gets on with a wide range of other animals. In terms of 
sandbox play, Nodosaurus isn't one with a wide range of nice skins, but there are some standout patterns here. The Paul Krana pattern adds a beautiful blue cyan to its armoured back and tips its spikes with a deep red hue. Couple this with Svalbard or Mangrove Forest for a nice combination. Nodosaurus is also one of the animals where no patterns and just using a skin colour gives you nicer variations, but it is not the reason this animal should be in your parks. Putting it simply, this animal has one of the cutest social animations in the game. If this animation doesn't make you smile or laugh, then you must be as cold as Claire Deering was at the start of Jurassic World. Number 5. Barbarodactylus Another DLC species, this wonderful pterosaur seems to get forgotten now that we have the supersized Quetzalcoatlus in game. It also has to contend with other decorative crested pterosaurs like Tapajara and the Geostenbergia. However, to me, the Barbarodactylus is a better option than either of those two. Firstly, in terms of campaign numbers, it has a very high rating. Its rating is 194 and it requires a minimum of three in a social group. That means that your pack will deliver a nice minimum of 582 to your park's rating. Compare that to the Tapajara's pitiful 129. In fact, it has the highest rating of any of the colourful crested pterosaurs in game. And in terms of colours, they are pretty amazing. Some of my favourite combinations are Svalbard and Paul Krana, which I've called the so-called Watermelon Crest. You also have the Mangrove Forest and Rana, whose blues and oranges work really well together. Barbarodactylus simply looks better than the other similar animals that you could pick from. We're halfway through this list and if you're liking this video so far leave a like and a comment down below with what animals you think are underrated in Jurassic World Evolution 2. Number 6 Elasmosaurus the aquatics in Jurassic World Evolution 2 get a bad rap due to their lack of animations and such at the moment. But even so, Elasmosaurus I think gets ignored way too often. Like the Monolophosaurus, it inhabits a group with some very hard hitting animals like the Attenborosaurus and the Styxosaurus, that of the long necked Plesiosaurs. Elasmosaurus also has the distinction of looking the most ungainly of these animals with its super long neck. And I think the Hand of Frontier also did this animal a disservice this, giving it the rump fin and a very strange spiky head. But even so, I think Elasmosaurus has some of the best skins of any aquatic in the game. One of my favourites is what I like to call the copper-backed skin of Amazon Rainforest and Lithobates. Its coloration makes me think of copper turning green. There is also the wonderful Sapphire Sands skin, as I've named it, a mixture of this warm yellow Gambia River Basin skin and the blues of the Papurana pattern. And for those wanting a skin for coral reef inspired aquatic enclosures, Try using Mangrove Forest with Paul Krana for a colourful display that suits those wonderful coral decorations. Number 7. Chasmosaurus All this poor ceratopsid. Much like Nodo, Mono and Elasmo, the Chasmosaurus suffers from being in a very packed niche of animals with many of its cousins considered fan favourites more than it. Chasmosaurus has to deal with the might of animals like Nasutoceratops, Cynoceratops, Styracosaurus and good old Triceratops. So why use the Chasmosaurus? Well firstly, its rating is better than at least the Nasutoceratops and the Styracosaurus. And unlike those two animals, it will actively like being around Taurosaurus and Triceratops and Cynoceratops. It is also relatively cheap and requires a small social group. This makes it pretty useful in my eyes for challenge mode play. In terms of sandbox, the Chasmosaurus can be a little difficult to find nice skins for, however unlike some Ceratopsians, Styracosaurus and Triceratops springs to mind here, it does at least have some nicely designed frills when using the patterns. Some of my favourites are the demon skin, that of Svalbard and Paul Krana, that adds fiery red and black patterns to the frill, and the sunset skin of Quillian Mountains and Kalkorana, that adds nice orange stripes to the frill. While it might not be as famous as Triceratops, or as movie noteworthy as Nasutoceratops, for me, Chasmosaurus deserves not to be forgotten. Number 8. Tylosaurus. This is another strange one. I feel like I don't use this smaller mosasaur enough in my parks, and I think it's often overlooked for animals of similar size like Liplorodon or the Attenborosaurus. Yet Tylosaurus has some of the most distinctive patterns in the game. Tylosaurus also comes second in terms of rating out of all the aquatics, 
and is fifth out of all of the animals in game, with a massive 1661 score. This makes it far superior in sheer numbers than a lot of other aquatic animals in the game. It's the skins that for me make this animal worth it. Unlike some of the marine animals, the Tylosaurus has a very clear pattern, that of these brilliant stripes. It's easy to create some nice skins as a result, such as Svalbard and Pelophylax with these wonderful deep red stripes. Or how about Mangrove Forest with Papurana? This wonderful blue-bellied skin with the black stripes makes me think of some sort of sea snake. Tylosaurus might not be as large as its Mosasaurus cousin, but I think deserves more time in our parks. Number 9. Hoangosaurus What happened to what was one of my favourite animals of all time in Jurassic World Evolution 1? Not only did they seal it behind the Deluxe Edition paywall, something that bugs me to this day, but this cute little Stegosaurian seems to have been forgotten by park builders. What's the stats? Well, Hoango has an OK rating of 90, but that still makes it higher than a lot of other more popular animals. It also gets on with a range of other species, including most sauropods and hadrosaurs, making it useful for mixed enclosures of those animals. One of its biggest advantages is its relatively low environmental needs, meaning it won't need a huge enclosure to be happy, nor will it need many animals around it, as its small social group and decent population needs are fairly easy to cater for. But one of Hwango's biggest plus points for me are the skins. Hwango had some of the best skins in the first game, and in Jurassic World Evolution 2, they've only gotten better. The wonderful tiger stripe skin of the first game can be recreated by using Gambia River Basin and Rana. One of my favourites is the combination of Amazon Rainforest and Paul Krana for a lovely triclaw green skin. Paul Krana also works with the Quillian Mountain skin, creating this blue bodied marbled pattern. Or how about Svalbard and Papurana? For this fiery black and sunset pink skin. There's a huge variety of colour in both skin and patterns available for this adorable little herbivore, and it deserves more time in our parks. Number 10, the British carnivores. The final dinosaurs I want to talk about here are the pair of British based carnivores, that of Megalosaurus and Metriacanthosaurus. I'm talking about them both here because I think they both have the same reasons why they get ignored and the same reasons why they shouldn't be. So why are they overlooked? Well firstly, I think that yet again, they occupy a niche in terms of the animal type that is pretty overpacked in Jurassic World Evolution 2, that of the mid-sized carnivore, and there are some really strong contenders in here. You have animals like the Cryolophosaurus or the Eutyrannus that have more interesting body shapes, and in the latter case feathers. You have animals like Carnotaurus or Ceratosaurus with their movie history, and you have animals like Allosaurus that have their real world popularity. And that's before we even talk about animals like Albertosaurus or the Kinjalsaurus. But these two British animals, I would argue, are better than any of those medium sized carnivores. Firstly, their ratings are very high, much higher than other animals. Megalosaurus sits at 642, making it higher rated than Allosaurus or even Suchomimus. Metriacanthosaurus sits at 510, not as high but still higher than the Pinocchio Rex or even Albertosaurus. Then we have their security ratings where it sit at 4, compared to the Albertosaurus's or Pinocchio Rex's 5. Both the British animals also have slightly smaller environmental needs, and environmental needs that are slightly easier to create as well. And while the British animals are slightly more expensive, they on average have better lifespans. For sandbox play, both animals have an amazing variety in their skins and patterns. Metriocanthosaurus was one of my favourite carnivores in the first game for this very reason, and the skins available in the second game only make it better. For a copy of the first game skin, try Sonoran Desert and Rana. For something more vivid, how about Gambia River Basin and Pelophylax? Or how about the contrast of Svalbard and Kalkorana for a great red striped skin? Megalosaurus, meanwhile, may not have as colourful patterns, but its skin colour options are far superior. Gambia River Basin results in this brilliant blue and black sheen, which can be further enhanced with the speckled white marbling of the Paul Krana pattern. Or how about something cheetah-esque by using the Great Sandy Desert skin colour and the Pelophylax pattern for this lovely orange and black skin. 
Or how about this deep red wine coloured Svalbard skin improved with the Papurana pattern? These two British carnivores have some of the best skins in game and offer some of the best ratings for their type of animal. The fact that either of them barely get used in parks I've seen is doing them a disservice. Megalosaurus and Metriocanthosaurus should definitely be used more often. So there we have it, 10 species of animals that I think are overlooked in most people's parks. Let me know in the comments which of these animals you think you use the least or why you don't use them at all. Don't forget while you're there to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, stay safe and goodbye.